God Note Suplex. Today's topic, we're going to be diving into the Mickey James Trashgate situation. Now, as you may know, on April 15th, WWE released many superstars, including Billy Kay, Peyton Royce, Samoa Joe, and Mickey James. For a complete list and a deep dive into that, check the archives. I do have a video for those events. Mickey James returned to the company in 2017 alongside Alexa Bliss on the SmackDown roster and would be shifted between Raw and SmackDown for the next several years. While she had been a multiple time WWE Women's WWE Divas and Knockouts Champion in TNA, she had never recaptured a championship in her most recent run. Mickie James was outspoken about not enjoying sitting on the sidelines and recently spoke out against ageism in wrestling and the different expectations set for women as opposed to men. And Mickie stated, I feel I need to say this as I would never want to feel as if I had offended a brother. I am in no way discrediting the men in our industry. They have every reason to be there and to be celebrated. I have nothing but love and respect for everyone I've shared the ring, locker room, buses, and road with. With age comes strength and wisdom that you can't teach. Now we saw multiple superstars comment and many in the wrestling world reacted to another mass firing. And many are comparing the April 15th firings to the group that was fired last year, almost to the day. The new news came out a week later on April 22nd when Mickey James received a care package from WWE. One week later from the firing, Mickey received her farewell package from WWE which was a garbage bag with her stuff in it, with her first name on it, kind of shoved into a box, as you can see in this picture here. She then tweeted to Vince McMahon, I am not sure if you are aware. I did receive my WWE care package today. Thank you. Hashtag always blessed and grateful. Hashtag women's wrestling matters. Now, soon after Mickey James posted her quote unquote care package, Fightful.com confirmed that Mark Carano was on the outs with WWE after being blamed for Mickey James having her items returned in that trash bag. In an update to our earlier post, several names within WWE have reached out to identify Mark Carano as being the point of blame in the trash bag incidents to release talent. All of those who made contact with Fightful on the record say that they have also heard that he's been let go from the company. Carano's role was already largely taken over by Johnny Ace, who made the calls to release talent last week, and also made calls to apologize to talent this evening. Ace stated to some of those talent that Carano was responsible for the trash bag mishaps and that, quote, it had been taken care of, without explicitly stating Carano had been fired at the time. WWE sources had also made contact with Fightful to express remorse about the trash bag incidents, calling them embarrassing and saying they should have never happened. It was reiterated that they wanted to take care of it as quickly as possible. Carano appeared on several episodes of Total Divas, dramatizing his role in talent relations. Shortly after that, news broke Jason Jordan was announced as the replacement for John Laurinaitis as the lead producer for both Raw and SmackDown. According to PW Insider, Jordan has been given a new backstage role with more responsibilities. Laurinaitis will take over as head of talent relations, who's replacing Mark Carano's old position. So Stephanie McMahon took to Twitter and tweeted out to Mickey James, I am embarrassed you or anyone else would be treated this way. I apologize personally and on behalf of WWE, the person responsible is no longer with our company. Triple H posted, Upon learning of the disrespectful treatment some of our recently released talent received on behalf of the company, we took immediate action. The person responsible for this inconsiderate action has been fired and is no longer with WWE. Now, former WWE superstars were said to have favored Carano being let go, and many either disliked him or loathed him. Multiple former wrestlers described Carano as a snake, while others simply said F Mark Carano. Current WWE superstars and staff said they could see his firing coming, particularly after he was replaced as head of talent relations by John Laurinaitis back in March. Many within the company considered his job a lose-lose and they believed he was the fall guy for the trash bag situation, although the belongings being sent in such a way was how he usually handled departures. One superstar wasn't as negative about Carano and noted many who had issues with him had a problem with the office as a whole. The wrestler also said Carano didn't discipline people in a hurtful or condescending way. He also tried to improve pay for referees 
which others in his position had not tried to do. A longtime WWE name also expects Carano to return to the company at some point because he knows where too many bodies are buried. They did note it was difficult to take Carano at his word, however. So there is some mixed perspectives on Carano. There is also some past stories with ex-talent, i.e. CM Punk. I believe he received his good luck on your future endeavor papers on the day of his wedding, if you can imagine that, which was another misunderstanding allegedly. But here's the thing, Stephanie and Triple H don't seem to be uh, too fond of Carano, it seems, from their tweets. But again, he is a part of the old guard, it seems. But how long will that old guard last? As JR always says, time takes no jobs, or time doesn't lay down for anybody. So there will be a changing of the guard. It's inevitable. Is there a battle between the guards behind the scenes? Between the new school and the old school? A battle between Triple H and Vince and, and Vince's crew, Bruce Pritchard, John Laurinaitis. And if so, why is that not on TV? That would be some intriguing, interesting stuff, especially with the rise in podcasting and podcast viewership and listeners. It's become a thing in the wrestling community. And I wonder how many people would recognize Bruce if he came out. And even if they didn't recognize him, who would just be open for a new character and maybe incorporate it into some ultra authority storyline situation. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of stuff here. Something that could maybe entice people to actually care about Monday nights. Shout out to Circle of Debate. They don't even talk about Mondays over there. Don't mention Mondays over there. And speaking of Circle of Debate, here's a snippet of the devious one, Ivan, with some tall glass thoughts. She had this happen before that her... 10 years ago that her her belongings came in the trash bag. She didn't ask for her last title run, but she asked for, you know, creative ideas. Let me get something in, let me do something. And the fact that, you know, she digressed like, about why the, why the fact that other professional male wrestlers are getting their, you know, their spot at my age and why am I not able to either? So she pretty much said like, I didn't mean to get him fired, but to be honest, this is not the first time he's done this. So. It was really shocking to get a to get her side of the story, and I'm glad Vince called. But she, at least at the end of the day, she has respect for Vince, uh, but not the politics in WWE. That's a fact. So I guess now we have Johnny Ace. Hey, I'm back. So we'll see. You know, I hope Mickey James goes somewhere where she is highly, you know, gets her respect. I hope NWA is one of them with her husband Nick Aldis, or maybe an Impact. Go back to impact hopefully maybe we you know trying to rebirth that career that she had an impact hopefully maybe get a last not a last run but at least something for her you know i just she's very talented very knowledgeable in the ring and knows the in and out of as a psychology and why not i have her as a coach i would definitely shout out to circle of debate that full episode link is in the description below and shout out to the whole league of extraordinary podcasters and again money brings ego and status and maybe Carano thought his shit didn't stink and he can kind of do whatever if that is how he was handling the departure of talent shoving their stuff in boxes like why couldn't you just fold it the ladies who do the sewing and who make the gear couldn't have folded that nice and neatly for her you could have folded it up and got a smaller box and saved on shipping if that is how Carano is handling stuff then maybe it is time for him to get his ass out of there and give someone that paycheck who deserves it. Mickey put in her damn work and she deserves some damn respect, if you ask me. Hardcore wrestling fans have been hearing of what happens behind the scenes for years and years now. This isn't a big surprise to many of us, but I just ask, why does it keep happening? Why haven't we learned from past incidences such as CM Punk? When situations like this happen, does that make AEW stock rise? Now, Mickey recently gave more insight on the Trashgate situation. She spoke on the GAW podcast, and I provided a link in the description below. In the episode, she states, All I can do is laugh about it. It's not even about the trash bag at the end of the day. It was never about the trash bag for me. I was astonished about how it took off. I almost deleted the post because I'm going like, I feel this comes off as too, too nasty or bitter or whatever. I'm being sarcastic, obviously, but just trying to laugh at myself and the situation. 
because to be quite honest, I got my stuff the same exact way 10 years ago, and I took it very much to heart in the sense of like, this is what the company thinks about me. It's good now because I'm in a good space, and I'm freed up in a sense that I can now truly say this or express myself in a real fashion without holding back, or being in an ugly space about it. I was just so like, wow, they still do this, and this is bullshit. But it's also kind of comical when you think about all of this because it's literally how I felt that they thought about me for the last three years whenever I would pitch anything or talk about anything. A promo was released by Impact Wrestling for Slammiversary 2021. The promo which was seen during Impact's Rebellion pay-per-view flashed images of different wrestlers including Samoa Joe, Mickey James, and Chelsea Green. While the exact date for the show wasn't given, the pay-per-view will likely take place in the second half of July. The 90-day no-compete clauses for all of the wrestlers, released on April 15th, will officially expire on July 14th. Mickey James and Chelsea Green, known as Laurel Van Ness, both held the Impact Knockout Championships during their respective runs. Now, Mickey also revealed on the podcast that the person who sabotaged her in WWE is still happily employed by the company. If the person is still employed, was Carano just a fall guy? Was Carano the guy who did it years ago? And this time around, it was maybe Bruce? Do you think she's getting unnecessary heat? from her marriage to Nick Aldis, who's making his own waves in NWA. So what do you think about the whole Trashgate situation? Do you think Mickey was done dirty? Or is that just business as usual? Is there more to this story that we don't know? Let us know what you think in the comments below and stay tuned for more from Side Note Suplex.